I was with a high school boyfriend from, like, for pretty much from grade seven to grade nine. And then, as soon as the pregnancy happened, it, the whole situation, like, it wasn't his kid, and he was involved in gangs and drugs. And I was 18, pregnant. I was living in BC with my daughter's father. And uh, I came back home here to Winnipeg, and my mom told me about Villa Rosa. I was 33 years old uh, when I first came to Villa Rosa. I had been struggling with drugs and alcohol for many, many years, and so my family were very reluctant to take me in. My husband had died of a drug overdose and left me a widow and pregnant. That left me homeless, and I, I knew. Uh, that if I didn't have anywhere to stay, I mean, the chances are of, of me having, you know, anything to do with motherhood would probably be slim to none. When I was accepted, it was probably the best day of my life. I felt like, you know, there was going to be some hope. Villa Rosa is a prenatal and a postnatal residence. Over the last 10 or 15 years, the needs of our clientele has gone through the roof. We've seen huge increases in mothers arriving with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, with mental health issues, with cognitive delays, with really high levels of addiction issues, backgrounds in violence, abuse, gang affiliation. When they come here, we like to really provide a sanctuary, a place to really focus on themselves and the future of themselves and their baby. My first reaction was um, just all the rules and all the 8 o'clock curfew and I just didn't know if I could do it. When you're used to doing whatever you want, going home when you want, it, it's, it was hard. The staff were very respectful. They were understanding, they were caring, they weren't judgmental. We provide a safe and healthy place to stay and a healthy, balanced, nutritious meals and snacks as well as an opportunity to access the medical system, whether that be a doctor or a midwife. Programming, prenatal classes, labor and delivery support. We have wonderful volunteer labor companions who will attend a birth with a mom if she doesn't have anybody to go with her. We have different programs in parenting and adoption support. We really want to make sure our moms get a real holistic opportunity in the building so that they're really prepared for the birth of their baby and they can make their plans. Villa Rosa is made up of two buildings. We have our main residence that has 25 beds in it, which has our school and our parent-child center and our you know, main dining room and living area. Villa Rosa doesn't make the determination whether a mother is given an opportunity to parent. We're looking at how do we help a healthy woman give birth to a healthy baby? How do we give these young families the best start that they deserve? It's just by the sheer fact of the realities of our society today and some of the perhaps socioeconomic um, you know, realities of the Aboriginal community do we find that many uh, of our clients at Villa Rosa of course are our young Aboriginal females. For some of the women that are here, this is their first, um, their first exposure to their culture. Uh, some of them are smudging for the first time and seeing sage for the first time, and and learning the importance of their their own sacredness at the time that you know that they're here. We have this belief that you know when these children are born how they come into this world and, and how this mother's cared for is going to affect the next seven generations of that, um, of that family. So that's why it's so important that these women get, um, get a really strong, strong spiritual, physical, emotional um, uh, base for, for the bringing in this child. It's not a First Nations organization. It's not a, a, a Métis organization. It's not an Inuit organization. It's a people's organization. It's designed to, to, to help us all. So you're just supporting the back of the baby's neck, kind of under their ear. 
Villa Rosa's breastfeeding initiation rate is 97%, which is um, huge. It's quite a bit higher than the national average. It gives them nutrition, it gives them relationship, and it gives them protection against diseases like diabetes, ear infections, pneumonias. A huge part of it, I believe, is because this is a live-in program. They see it in the house all the time. They see their friends breastfeeding. And um, I think it just becomes part of their cultural norms. Well, it was crucial because my son was uh, born two months premature for one thing. And he was not able to go to my breast right away. I wasn't able to hold him for a, a week. And so when I was able to do that for him, it was part of the beginning of giving back to him and, and living my amen to him. What's the trouble? We know that uh, our women are doing quite well. We know that many of them are bringing their babies to term, that our prematurity rate is lower than would be expected in a disadvantaged population like the women who use the services of Villa Rosa. We have a parent child centre in the building that's staffed with early childhood educators as well as volunteers in the community that come and rock babies for a half day a week. Well, it all started with an ad in the free press. The ad uh, said, do you love rocking babies or something like that, volunteer at Villa Rosa. I'd never even heard of Villa Rosa, didn't know where it was. Came out, um, had a brief interview with her, a tour, and I was blown away by it. I thought, wow, this is something I could really get into. Went home, told my husband, and I started volunteering. And I remember her crying so much. and and the staff being so supportive and giving me tips and um, over and over and over again because it was the same thing. I was just exhausted. Different noises, whether it's oh. a rattle or something. Once they've had their baby and they've had some successes in seeing what they can do and how they can take care of their baby and how they figure out what their baby needs and how it makes them feel, you see a lot of growth and, and confidence. We also have the postnatal house next door, which is an eight suite apartment that our young mums can move into when they're looking for some, really some pre-independent living skills. They're one bedroom with a small kitchen and living room, and they're all set up. Everything that a young mum would need. And in the evening they have support by residential care workers so that if baby's sick or they're having problems settling baby that there's someone there that are able to give them a hand and problem solve. I didn't have any life skills left. I was street skilled. I mean I knew how to survive on the street. Um, so learning how to cook for myself again, uh, learning uh, basic nutrition. Um, life skills like banking, like budgeting, um, all those kinds of things, just basic hygiene. Winnipeg School Division has uh, several classrooms here. So many of, of the young women that come here have not been successful in school. We take them when they come in the door, we start, and the next time they're back, we just carry on. I took a biology course because I was interested, that was my favorite subject in school, so I took biology, and, um, and I did really, really well. It was interesting, and with that feeling of success was something that kind of drove me for other things. I think that's a, a big piece of it, is that we expect them to graduate. Maybe not this year, maybe it'll take them two, three years, but we expect them to. Their child has now become the center of their universe, rightly so, and so they need supports to be able to continue that education. And having um, educational uh, uh, grants or, or fellowships or scholarships will really give them the resources to be able to continue their education. Winnipeg Foundation manages uh, Villa Rosa's scholarship fund. The more money that goes into the endowment fund, the more that the individual awards can increase. Because we have the Clarion Hotel and uh, we have the facility that they could have a fundraising dinner. And it's been working very well.
United Way has been uh, partnered with Villa Rosa since 1966. We have funded a number of things over the course of that time. The need continues to increase and the services continue to increase. Therefore, we rely more than ever every year on our funders. Well done. Well done. I think that first and foremost, many Aboriginal groups who are in a position to help this type of organization should. Then it came time for me to move out and uh, I didn't want to go. They said, you're ready to go, and I said, no, I'm not. But I was, I was ready to go. I think it really has evolved and changed with the times in, in very important and, and crucial ways. And it's, it's really satisfying to see young women come back in leadership roles um, within the board and uh, supporting each other as peers. And just knowing that I had something to contribute as far as a past resident. Being a board member keeps me connected. I know how much that this organization helps the women who come here, the women and the, the girls who come here. And I, I need to be a part of that. It's, uh, it's in me, it's in my heart. I guess I'd want them to know that if they don't want to be alone in the, the journey that they're taking, that Villa Rosa is here to walk with them. Evelyn, when she arrived, was, I had original gangster shaved into the back of my head, and I was um, a North End gal, stealing, um, fighting, just not, not a good person. And then when I left, I was a mom. Villa Rosa gave me confidence to, to be a mother on my own and to be able to live on our own and to be able to do anything I needed to do for myself and my daughter. Because of Villa Rosa, I have become the woman that I've always wanted to be and the mother that I've always wanted to be.